Hello everyone, and welcome. Grab yourself a cup of coffee, maybe a tea, or even some whiskey if you are watching in the evening. Let's sit back, relax, and talk about some common coffee myths. These are things that are often said about coffee that may or may not have some truth to them, but they're often taken at face value. Let's dive a bit deeper today and try to understand what's true and what's not. Let's get started. Number one, coffee dehydrates you. This may come as a surprise, but this is actually not true. When we look at the makeup of a cup of coffee, we find mostly water, about 98%. The other 2% is essentially what we have dissolved into the water from the coffee. And important to this discussion, a small part of that 2% is caffeine. Caffeine is a diuretic, which increases urine production, which means that you lose more water by going to the bathroom more often. That effect from the caffeine is essentially the dehydrating aspect that everyone talks about. But remember, the 98% water is still contributing to the hydration of your body. And that small diuretic effect of caffeine is not enough to offset the positive effect of water's hydration. Number two, a lighter roast has more caffeine than a dark roast. So this is one that is super common. I hear it all the time, even from Starbucks baristas, from food journalists writing about coffee. And this one is not true. Although, if you brew your coffee by weighing it out, it's actually the dark roasts that have more caffeine. Let me explain. The coffee roasting process basically does nothing to the caffeine content in green beans, no matter how light you roast it or how dark you roast it. But what does change relative to the roast is the weight of the beans. The darker you roast, the more porous your beans become and the more moisture they lose. Therefore, the darker you go makes them weigh less. So let's compare this visually. You've got two beans. Both are the same coffee, except one is light roast and one is a dark roast. Since the caffeine wasn't affected, they've both got, let's say, one milligram. Now for the weight of the bean, the light roast weighs 0.75 grams and the dark roast weighs 0.5. Now let's pretend we are making a cup of coffee and you need 30 grams of ground coffee. When you're weighing out the beans, you will essentially use more individual beans on a dark roast than you would for a light roast. To make 30 grams of the light roast, you'd use approximately 40 beans. And to make 30 grams of the dark roast, you'd use approximately 60 beans. So now you might start to see where I'm going. At one milligram a bean for both roasts, the light roast coffee will now have 40 milligrams of caffeine, whereas the dark roast coffee will have 60 milligrams. So this is why when you are weighing the beans, darker roasts tend to have more caffeine. The common belief that caffeine is baked off during the roasting process and that dark roasts have less is just not true. I will note that if you do use volumetric measurements like a scoop of coffee, both a light roast and a dark roast will have similar amounts of caffeine. Number three, coffee has many health benefits. This one is, thankfully, true. We know so much more about coffee now with new research coming out, and there are many links to coffee reducing your risk of things like type two diabetes, cardiovascular diseases, and even some neurodegenerative disorders like Alzheimer's or dementia. The latter two are particularly affected by darker roasts. Much of the older research that was done to look at coffee as a possible carcinogen or link it to cancer in some way was either faulty or refuted by newer studies. The main downsides can include a slightly increased blood pressure, some anxiety for certain people, and having a hard time falling asleep. But the real harm that can come from drinking coffee is usually only shown in studies on people who drink excessively something like five cups of coffee or more a day. Drinking moderately, you should be fine. Number four, coffee stays hotter when you add cream. Out of the entire list, this one really surprised me, but it's true. If you have two cups of black coffee side by side, both starting at the same temperature, and you add a little bit of cream to one of them, you will initially see a drop in temperature, but if you were to measure the temperature of both cups over an hour, you would see that the black cup of coffee cools about 20% quicker 
than the cup with cream. There are a few proposed reasons for this, but a big one that I was able to find a paper on is due to the color of the coffee. Darker colors emit more heat than lighter colors. So by lightening the color of the coffee, you are essentially slowing the emission of heat. Another explanation is that cream adds viscosity and so the liquid evaporates slower. This is important because regular evaporation carries away a lot of heat. The great thing about this one is that it's so easy to try at home. Brew a pot of coffee, put two cups side by side, add a little bit of cream and record your results. Let me know how it goes. And the last one, number five, the hole on the bag of coffee is for smelling. If you've ever worked at a coffee shop, you know that people like to come in, grab a bag of your beans, and squeeze them so that they can smell the aroma of the coffee through the hole. Now you may be able to do that to the bag, but that's not the reason that it's there. So I think that more people know that this one is not true. But if you don't, that's okay. Allow me to explain its real purpose. The hole on the bag is actually a one-way valve. This allows pressure that's built up inside the bag to push out the valve but not allow any air to get inside the bag. So what's causing this pressure, you may ask? That would be carbon dioxide, which beans release over time, especially a few days after roasting, and slowly over the next few weeks. Without the valve, the bag could expand and puff up, which is not so bad on its own, but if the pressure is high enough, it could explode. The valve helps the bag to not explode, and at the same time, keeps oxygen out, which is a natural enemy of coffee beans. Now, normally the conversation around the valve would have ended there, but there's actually been some recent discussion that I found regarding whether it's a bad idea to squeeze the bag of coffee in order to smell it. The argument mainly depends on how the valve is constructed. In some designs, the valve may not function if there's not enough pressure built up inside the bag from the CO2. This could look something like a loose filter that is pushed up against the outer wall of the bag, but only once there's enough pressure inside. So in this case, squeezing the CO2 out of the bag would release that pent up pressure, as well as that sort of protective layer that it was giving the beans. The valve may not function properly anymore and oxygen might leak in. But there are other designs I've seen that would not work like this. There seems to be a more sturdy, rubber or foam piece that's blocking the oxygen from getting in and once again when pressure builds inside the bag it deforms that foam piece moves it out of the way and allows the carbon dioxide to leave but when the pressure goes away the foam falls back into place and is still blocking the hole in this case you wouldn't expect that removing the co2 would allow oxygen to enter so honestly i can't give a hundred percent on this last point and it's all sort of new to me, so I'll continue researching it, and it might fit in another topic in another video. If you have any more information on this, feel free to comment below. I'd love to hear your thoughts. So that's it. Let me know which one caught you off guard, or maybe you knew them all. Comment below with your thoughts. Let's keep the conversation going, and I hope you'll subscribe so that I can see you again next week. Have a great day.